asking the questions mainstream journalists will never ask. This is your Richie Allen Show on RichieAllen.co.uk, Fab Radio 2 in Manchester, and TriggerWarning.tv. Hello! Um, I'm live. I won't be live for long, so by the time I get finished, there'll probably be nobody watching. <laughs> That'll be par for the course for me. By the time I get done with this, everybody will be gone. I turn down the old music there. Yeah, it was about 25 minutes into the live show, and uh, the stream went down. I was just finished the monologue, and I was about to introduce Alison Shablo, and the stream went down. Um, there's nothing nefarious about it. It's just one of those things. I think it's only the third time it's happened in around about... Uh, three and a half years. I use a streaming company in California. It's one of the biggest in the world. And um, it just stopped. But at the same time, it killed the recording. And the computer basically crashed. Otherwise, I would have tried to carry on and posted the entire show um, later on on Podomatic. But I suppose uh, probably the best thing to do was to reschedule Phil and Alison to uh, a later day. So I've booked them in for, for next week. I'm going to get the engineer to have a look. Uh, the engineer is the legendary Paul Ripley. If I can get him to have a look at it uh, tomorrow, just to be on the safe side so that it doesn't happen again um, tomorrow because um, it's very frustrating, especially in light of the fact that I brag all the time about the equipment that is um, is um, said for me is in our studio. We've got the best of everything. I mean, it's BBC outside broadcast kit, you know, 2018 kit. It's the best of everything we have there so um, we never have a problem really it's just one of those bloody things so anyway in the middle of um in the middle of or just at the end of the monologue so so there you go i also wanted to test out this live stream thing i wanted to have a look at it um, i've never done anything with live stream on facebook so I, I wanted to have a look at it in fact I, I tried to do it on the richie allen facebook page but they asked me to sign up to something called live stream and they wanted to charge me for that it's a live stream thing. I didn't know anything about it, but it seems that on my own personal page, I can do live video and share it to uh, the Richie Allen Show page. But I'm using a basic laptop and I don't have any programs. I don't have any software downloaded whereby, for example, I could now speak to my guests. See, that would be Andy. So I'm going to look into that. Now, I don't envisage we'll ever have too many problems with the live radio feed, but in the event of anything like this happening again in the future, it would be handy to have the software on the computer to um, to basically interview those guests by way of this live stream. Some of my previous guests who do their own programs, people like Trish, um, Trish the Dish, of course, she does it. She does it via her page every day, so there you are. Anyway, uh, Hayden Hewitt is on, the man himself. I could have done with his presence tonight, Hayden Hewitt, uh, William Henderson, Jackie Drew, my old friend from Nottingham, top woman, Declan Rosie, David Mortimer. Yeah, it's a mad time, isn't it? This is a mad, it's a mad time for free speech and free thought in the media. By the way, what happened today has got nothing to do with um, me being interfered with. That's never happened and it's never going to happen. It's just one of those things, the stream went down. It might even be back now for all I know, the stream, I don't know. I've left the studio in disgust, threw my toys out of the pram, swore at the manager on the sideline and threw a water bottle into the crowd. That's what I did for my sins. But this is looking okay then. This is looking okay. Yeah, we might use this. Hayden's been talking to me about this, actually, about doing more of this. Uh, and also um, our friend, uh, the great Jim Corr uh, from the Corr. I'm not name dropping now. I, many of you will know that Jim I've known Jim for many years through making programs like this, but he's often said we should use the video aspect a bit more just to take a break from um, radio every now and then. But I love radio. It's always going to be radio, the Richie Allen show. It's always going to be audio. That's what it's all about. I mean, I am absolutely fucking gorgeous, right? <laughs> Let's be honest about it. I'm made for the telly, he says, with no hair and hardly any teeth. But... um. No, it's always going to be radio. But these are mad times for independent um, journalists and alternative outlets like Russia Today, 
which has been threatened all the time by politicians on both sides of the spectrum here in the UK. It's a dreadful, shocking, horrible thing for people to be calling for the closure, or at least in the UK anyway, the banning of a media outlet because it says things that the establishment doesn't like. It's like I said yesterday, RT is never going to criticise Putin, right? And I don't like Vladimir Putin. I don't like him. And this tends to trigger people who get their information from sources like me because increasingly people see things in terms of black and white. So if you say you don't like Putin, you must be a shill. You must be, a, you know, you must be back in the establishment. No, not at all. Vladimir Putin and his government are on the right side of the major issues for now. Their intervention in Syria prevented Syria becoming a basket case like Libya and like Iraq. They're doing the right thing there, supporting the Assad government. And they did the right thing when Victoria Newland and her neocon husband and the rest of the neocons threw out the democratically elected president of Ukraine, which is a direct threat to Russia's sovereignty. Of course, Russia is on the right side of these issues. But it doesn't mean that Putin's a nice guy. Doesn't mean he didn't have something to do with the Sergei Skripal attack. I don't think he did have anything to do with it. Why would he? As Tara McCormick, the Leicester-based academic, said to Kay Burley today, why would he do that? Why would he do that now? I don't believe he did. But you can't say for certain that he didn't either. He's not a nice guy, Putin. People like him are not nice. Billionaire oligarchs are not nice people. Right? It's not black and white, this. But he's on the right side of things. So Russia today is never going to criticise Vladimir Putin. I don't mind that. It doesn't really matter at all, really, in the, in the grand scheme of things, because they have interviewed people who have criticised Putin. I've seen Galloway speaking to people on RT who have criticised Putin. So at least RT will say, well, right, you can have a go at Putin on our platform. It's just that we won't have a go at him. Fair enough. It's like I said yesterday, what about the, the Queen? Who's ever been allowed on the BBC to talk about the royal family? And, and, and the Nazi that is Prince Philip. The fucking Nazi sympathiser. Who's ever been given a platform to criticise uh, them? So don't, so, so don't start with RT won't criticise Putin. The BBC is worse than RT. You know, at least, the BBC, at least RT will let people on there to have a go at, um, to have a go at Putin, you know. Hi to Matthew, to Charlotte, to Sean, to Pranchius. How you doing, Pranchius? Connors to Tall to Rich Dard. Tommy Gohanawa Akara. Gorath Mila Magud. I'm very well. We're approaching St. Paddy's uh, Day, of course. The, the parade was, was, was in the city on Sunday. Last Sunday, just gone, the, the, the parade. I guess there must be something else happening this weekend in the city. But um, I will probably have two or three points of uh, stout on Saturday. I think I will. The rugby's on anyway, isn't it, on Saturday? Ireland play England at Twickenham for the uh, for the Grand Slam on Saturday, so I'll do I'll do that. Hi to Nathan Maverick. All right, you're getting your coat. Future Mrs. Allen just walked into the room there to get her coat. That's her in the background there. Do you want to say a quick hello? That's why I'm hiding. No, because no. I'm not looking my best. Everybody's here. The dog is here as well. I'm missing something. This is the front room. This is the sort of access you don't get from journalists like Gabe Early, right? <laughs> you don't get this sort of stuff. Welcome to my little, little. this is my little room with my music system and my speakers all around the room and my record player is there. You see my record player. Nathan Maverick, of course, uh, legendary performer himself. Um, the the um, Sex Pistols tribute band extraordinaire, top man. Um, Charlotte is asking about the piano. Uh, Caroline is the pianist. Do you, do you honestly fucking think that I play... Oh, a musical instrument. Look at those fingers, look. Jesus Christ. Anyway, if you're just joining this, I'm not going to stick around for very long, to be honest. Um, I'm not, because um, I'm going to try and get to the bottom of the stream. But 25 minutes into the program, the stream went down. There's nothing behind it. I love, I really do love our deep, conspiracy-minded listeners. I do love them. Everything has got to be interference it is an interference every now and then when you depend on a streaming company as you must do it'll go down yvonne says it says solar flares might be might be solar flares but the electricity didn't go down so um so we're still uh, we're still here 
Speaking of all things Russia, tomorrow the brilliant Ray McGovern, who's not been on the show for about seven or eight months. I thought Ray had fallen out with me, to be honest. I, I tried him a few times late last year and he was busy. But no, it's, uh, there's, nothing, nothing, there's nothing wrong there. Ray, I spoke with Ray today. And of course, he is a man who briefed several presidents as a top CIA official. And he's um, fallen out of favour, of course, with the intelligence community in America because Ray, in uh, particularly since September the 11th, Ray McGovern has begun to be very honest in terms of expressing his, his opinions about what the American deep state is doing, the Israeli deep state is doing. Ray's a good guy and uh, he's going to talk to us tomorrow on tomorrow night's programme about the the Skripal story and these allegations. I mean, I don't know if any of you, when the stream went down, if you logged on to BBC One to watch Panorama, but what an extraordinary pile of fucking worthless horse shit that is for John Sweeney to say, well, I'm going out to Russia and I'm going to investigate what it's like out there for the opposition. He had no intentions of doing an objective piece. I'd have more respect for the guy if he just said, well, I'm going out there to do a fucking hatchet job. I'd watch it then. I'd say, fair enough, you're going out there to do a hatchet job. But uh, dreadful shit to compare the situation in Russia today to Nazi Germany in 1933 on, on, on BBC radio. And for Nicky Campbell to ask him, is, is it like, is the World Cup going to be like Hitler's Olympics in 36? You know, the comparison being that Vladimir Putin is Hitler. A nice guy Vladimir Putin might not be. Right, I said already, I have no time for him. He's as bent as a seven bob note, Vladimir Putin. But he's no more bent than Theresa May. Hang on a second there for a minute, Jesus. Yeah, I'm in chav mode now. Tracksuit bottoms, <laughs> hoodie top, proper chav. As if I wear a shirt and tie during the programme. No, I don't. But, um, you know, this idea that Putin is somehow filthy. And I, I think he is filthy, to be honest. I think, I think corruption and Putin are, you know, keep great company. I, I think Putin is undoubtedly corrupt. There's no doubt about that. But this idea that Theresa May and her husband and uh, G4S and arms deals to Saudi Arabia and money laundering, loans, uh, and of course loans from Russian oligarchs and donations from Russian oligarchs in London as well. It's outrageous for the UK establishment to say, this guy's as bent as a seven bob note, but we're all right over here. You know, we're the good guys. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Um, just a quick word again on the, on the censorship. I understand that more and more and more YouTube channels have been deleted. Some of them good, some of them with uh, interesting information on there, and some of them rubbish. Um, but really, whether they're rubbish or not is for you to decide, not for Google to decide that because people are speaking about certain things, they should delete their channels. We have a new channel now. Um, for, for as long as it lasts, I don't know how long it's going to last. Excuse me. But for the time being, excuse me, Simon is going to keep putting the videos up there anyway. And um, Ian Pearson says I could be Jason Statham's stunt double. That's made my night, Ian. That's, that, you know, I should sign off there and then. Hi to Rachel May. How are you doing, Rachel? It's nice. This I like the way this works. I can see who's, um, who's been watching, who's jumping in, and who's jumping out, and who's, um, who's making comments. Can I scroll up there? I can. Maybe I can scroll up. Can I? No. It's nice to know this works. I couldn't launch it from the Richie Allen Show page. I had to do it from my from my own page. But I think I shared it to the Richie Allen Show page. So I don't know. I don't know how it works anyway. So there you go. So Ray McGovern is going to be on tomorrow. And I'm also going to be joined tomorrow. I, I'm, I'm, I'm embarrassed. Um, my mind has gone blank. Last night when I spoke to... Um, Jesus Christ, I'm embarrassed. Anne-Marie Carey, Annie Logical. Um, really interesting lady talked about 5G. She mentioned a man called Chris who's based in Gateshead. And he's been doing a lot of really good work confronting the local authorities in Gateshead and asking about the fact that these 5G 
boosters or whatever they are. They're on thousands of lampshades in Gateshead, which is in the northeast, in case um, some of you don't know where that is. And he's challenging the legality of this. And I had a chat with him today on Facebook. And uh, he said he'll come on tomorrow night to talk about that. It seems very interesting. So Ray McGovern will be on tomorrow. He'll be on. I've booked um, Phil and Alison Chablow in for early next week. And um, we'll, 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 uh, we'll reschedule accordingly there. But I've really got nothing else to say, folks, to be honest. I, I, well, I get to this stage and you know, I start talking through my arse proverbially. Maybe I do that all the time. I don't know. But I wanted to just have a look at this. And I know there is software that I can get where from here I could get somebody, I could dial somebody else in and you could see them in camera as well. And I could speak to them in the event, in the event that, um, you know, in the future it ever happened again. But, but the, the streaming issue is no big deal. It's not going to happen again. It's not going to happen often again. It will happen once in a blue moon like it did today. Um, and it really pissed me off because I was really enjoying it. I was really into that. And I was looking forward to catching up with Alison Chablo, who was in court last week. She's the lady who's being um, effectively persecuted by this Gideon Falter and this band of fucking retards um, called the Campaign Against Anti-Semitism, who uh, are a charity here who are going after people, trying to destroy people's careers, claiming that they're anti-Semitic, offering no evidence. Their charity status has to be taken down that. We're going to have, we're going to have a look at that. I know people like Gilad Atzman and others are looking at challenging this, this, this group of fascists, challenge, challenging their right to, to enjoy charity status and using that to basically introduce McCarthyism to the UK, claiming that people are anti-Semitic just because they're just because they're asking legitimate questions about the wretched, vicious, fucking horrible state of Israel, where um, lawless country that I don't have to tell you what goes on in Gaza, you know. And of course, there are thousands and thousands of Israelis who would agree with it and do agree with it and work to um, do their best to try and put a stop to it. But the political system is so screwed in, in Israel, it's impossible to do anything within the political system there, even if you could in any political system. The makeup of the Knesset is just a complete nightmare. It's not a Jewish issue, it's a Zionist issue. But these Zionists over here, the campaign against anti-Semitism, trying to destroy Alison Chablow because she wrote satirical songs about Anne Frank and other satirical songs. It's an affront to freedom of thought and free speech. I don't agree with everything that Alison says. I doubt that Alison agrees with everything that is said by Gilad Atzman or others. That's, that's, that's the beauty of, 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 of maturity, of being grown up about stuff. Don't agree with everything Alison says, but I think she's a nice woman. I think she's very smart. I think she's very funny. And uh, how dare anybody try and land her with a, with a criminal record for hate speech? Fuck off, you know? Uh, we have to stand up to these tyrants. These are the people getting people's speaking events shut down. In, uh, in various parts of the country. You, you know all about that. Now, I was involved in one of those situations late last year when a speaking event that I was taking part in was closed down here in, uh, in Manchester. And uh, I managed to secure a, a venue. Me, me and Paul Ripley, in fact. Uh, let me just say that again. Paul Ripley, uh, having been phoned by me, I was running around the city. Uh, Paul's uh, numerous contacts in the city, we were, we were able to secure a venue at the last minute. But if we hadn't have done that, these Zionist fuckers would have um, survived, would have um, won the day. So we've got to stop that. You know, we've got to, we've got to support people. We've got to support people who are saying things that we disagree with. That should be the rule of thumb. Forget about the people you do agree with, but fight for the rights of people to say things, people that you don't agree with. Like I don't agree with, give you an example, Tommy, scumbag would have a fight in an empty fucking telephone box Robinson absolute fucking scumbag right domestic violence scum no time for him but I'd fight for his right to say what he says about the impacts of immigration on this country even if I think a lot of people like Robinson are genuinely motivated by a genuine hatred of people 
with a slightly a slightly darker uh, skin tone than than theirs. I, I do believe that. About, I might be wrong, but I reserve the right to say that because of Robinson's previous. I interviewed Robinson on the radio in Spain a few years ago. He hung up. And Jam Chowdhury was on with us. And um, Robinson said something to Chowdhury about Muslims beating up their women. At which point I said to Tommy, but weren't you arrested, Tommy, by an off-duty police officer? Weren't you involved in a physical altercation with a woman? Tommy just hung up. That was about six, seven years ago now, I think, something like that. He was still with the English Defence League then. So I don't like him. I think he's a violent thug. He's a football hooligan trying to dress himself up as a serious political commentator. But I'd fight for his right to do that. I would fight for his right to speak and say what he wants, whether I agree with it or not. I, I would absolutely stand alongside him, hateful as I think he is, underneath it. But at the moment, he's saying things that are not, you know, racist. As I said, trying to portray himself maybe as somebody who's turned over a new leaf, but I don't believe that. But anyway... I'm rambling on now. Because people always say, why don't you get Robinson on? He wouldn't come on with me. Robinson's got bigger fish to fry now. While, while, while people like us are getting banned off of YouTube, people like Robinson are being promoted to promote the left-right agenda. See, Robinson and Paul Joseph Watson and um, what's this other, this, this American girl who says she was prevented entering the UK at Cali. All these people are just polarizers. And they're promoted and they are elevated by the system. They are given credence. They are where, where other people are being shadow banned. These people are being promoted so that they basically, they, 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 they keep supporting and propping up the left versus right identity politics, us versus them agenda, which the system loves. They love it. That's why you'll always see Robinson on YouTube. When I got banned off YouTube, I had 76,000 subscribers. Robinson had 77,000. Today, Robinson has nearly 120,000. And his videos get 200,000 views. When I had the same amount of subscribers, mine used to get 10, 11, 12,000 views. It's not about me. I'm just making the point. You see, people pushing for the consideration that the whole game is rigged that it's ridiculous, left versus right, conservative, Democrat, uh, excuse me, Republican, Democrat, conservative, Labour, it's just ridiculous, it's, just, it's, it's a game, it's an illusion, it's about identity, keep you wrapped up in that, and then you won't start looking at who's really pulling the strings. And nobody serves that better than Anne Coulter, Tommy Robinson on the one side, Owen Jones and the progressive fucking idiots on the other side. Hate, 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 hate. Oh, you're trying to stop us speaking. You're trying to shut us down. Oh, no, you're trying to shut us down. Oh, oh, it's right. Oh, left. It's bollocks. It's fucking bollocks. That's what it is. I think it's why... I think, I, I think it's why... And there aren't many commentators talking about that. Everywhere you look, Lionel Media, it's all left versus right, right versus left, you know. Progressives are being attacked. On the other side, liberals are being attacked. We're being attacked. It's fucking ridiculous. Race to the bottom. Who can be the biggest victim? Who can be, you know, who can claim that they are the most oppressed because of their truth? The truth is it's a load of bollocks. Left versus right is bollocks. There's a wonderful meme of sheep walking to a slaughterhouse. There's two entrances, left, right. The end result is the same thing. You get fucked. The sheep gets fucked. You know? Patter says there, people are praising Facebook banning Britain first. Uh, no time for them at all, but it's a slippery slope. You're right, Patter, and I said this in the monologue before I got cut off. I don't like Jada Franson, but I, I gave her a platform. She was on one of the very early Richie Allen shows in 2014. and She didn't do very well under some pretty moderate, calm questioning because they don't have any answers. Their answers are, oh, the white man's been attacked. There's an attack on, and the white man is to an extent being attacked, but it's an agenda that nobody wins, right? Europe has been flooded with migrants because Syria, Libya, Afghanistan, Iraq turned into fucking basket case zones. Of course, 
the impact it has on indigenous cultures in Europe, of course, is hugely negative. Hence, people say the white man is being attacked. Yes, up to a point we're all being attacked. This agenda doesn't favour left, right, white, black, pink, fucking lesbian, transgender, bisexual, straight, doesn't give a shit. Wants rid of every one of us. But we'll never get that through to people so long as the people I've mentioned previously, the alt-right, Paul Joseph Watson and the, the progressives, people start, people buy into that shit. They, they buy into I see it all the time. Alt-right. I was even called alt-right. Richie Allen, alt-right channel, progr- uh, um, conservatives being attacked. Fuck's sake. You know, I don't identify as anything. I'm not a socialist. I'm not conservative. I'm not liberal. I'm nothing. I'm just me. I make my decisions on things based on what I see and what I experience. I said this on the program before. I won't allow myself to be pigeonholed, to be boxed in by an identity group. The minute you do, every single decision you make, every position you adopt is formed by the identity group that you boxed yourself into. I'm a socialist. All right, well, then you have to be against Donald Trump, then you have to be against guns. You have to be against whatever the fuck. See, everything has to be black and white. There are no shades of gray. That's what identity politics does. Black, white. Black, white. I used to have this conversation all the time with friends of mine. You know, the gun issue is a classic one. They make it a black and white issue. It isn't black and white. It isn't. Guns are dangerous. They're terrible things. And they do get in the hands of people very easily who would shoot people like dropping a penny on the floor, like dropping a dime, right? That's a bad thing. That's not good. But also, there is undoubtedly an agenda to disarm people, to make it difficult for decent people to have guns. I I genuinely believe that. We know this because whenever there's a shooting, immediately progressive groups start demanding that there are more and more and more and more stipulations introduced or rules introduced about buying guns. From what I can see about the last shooting, doing the research, I mean, I do a lot of research every day. The last um, shooting, we, 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 we found that in fact, not, not the last shooting, but a previous shooting, somebody had been able to get a gun. He used to be in the military and the military under existing law were supposed to upload his details to a website after he was convicted for domestic violence and he was given a conviction. Immediately that should have went on a database which would have made it difficult for him to get guns. It didn't go on the database because somebody couldn't be arsed just doing that, right? Just doing that. So the guy ended up getting the gun. So it seems to me the laws are there anyway. I'm properly rambling now. But um, but it's not black and white. It's not black and white. Posse comitatus has just been thrown out the window in America. The, the, the law that says the military should never act, should never participate in domestic policing, it's happening now. They're turning the police into the military. They look like stormtroopers from one of the Star Wars movies, or they look like Robocop, lunatic police officers, turning up to some guy's got a couple of cannabis plants. They turn up, they've got tanks outside. You've, you've seen this stuff. They've got fucking tanks outside the guy's house. A fucking stoner with a couple of plants. They have tanks. And they won't knock on the door to say, Mr. Stoner, um, have you got a couple of cannabis plants there? No, no, no. They go through the front door and throw stun grenades into the fucking house. It's lunacy. So, of course, if you're living in America and you have a gun and you hear constant talk about, you know, we've got to stop, we've got to make it more difficult for people to get guns, of course you're bound to be annoyed. I don't like guns. I can't stand them. I've never held one. Played a bit of time crisis. That's about it. Bit of time crisis. But uh, not guns, you know. Gavin Wise, my friend in Cork, my Waterford friend. Don't call them retards, Richie. It's politically incorrect. Try fucktards. Absolutely. That reminds me of that great line from from, um, There's Something About Mary. Do you remember that? When Matt Dillon plays a con man and he's crazy about Mary, played by Cameron Diaz, and he knows that she's got a brother with a disability. I think her brother's name is Aaron. So he wants to cozy up to her and he wants to pretend that he works with people with disabilities. 
So he says, I'm an architect, but that's my day job. My, 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 my real gig is my hobby. And she said, what's that? And he says, I work with retards. And she says, is that not politically incorrect? And he says, I'll work with whoever I want to fucking work with. <laughs> One of my favorite lines ever. Um, hi to Rich Mortimer, to Gordon Carroll, and to Sue. Sue asks, what happened at court with Alison's case? It's caught me there, Sue, because I, I, I received the, 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 the posting from Alison's website today, and I was going to read it just before she came on air, to be honest. I've not read it, but I think it's another continuance of sorts. I think it's another continuance, you know. Um, yeah, Alison is the comedian, former Edinburgh Festival, got into trouble some years ago for the Quinell. Fucking hell. The Quinell, do you remember that? And she's made some satirical songs. They're very witty. And they're about the gas chambers and they're about Anne Frank and other such things that are likely to annoy certain people, Zionists mostly. And uh, this campaign against anti-Semitism, charity, which is an outrage. They have charity status, this group of... Don't say it. They're just a group of cowboys. They're just unashamed Zionists out to demean, harass, and ultimately discredit anybody who's asking questions about um, um, Israel and criticizing the policies of the Israeli government, the illegal, illegitimate Israeli government. They don't like that either. They don't like it when people say things like Jews are not a race. They don't like that either. I've said that to them several times. You're not a race, you know. You're just white people who believe in a fairy godfather in the fucking sky like the rest of us, like Catholics. We're not a race either, right? They don't like that. They don't want anybody to say stuff like that. They want to call that hate speech. It isn't hate speech. Uh, Alison Shablow doesn't hate Jews. I don't hate Jews. We know Jews. I um, have and will work with Jews in this city at various media organizations that I'm uh, accredited with. Um, it's the hateful Zionist um, overlords of Israel that we have a problem with. And, uh, and, and and what they do. But they don't like that. And this group, the Campaign Against Anti-Semitism, they came into the public eye around about the time that Operation Protective Edge, which is a wonderfully benign way of describing the carpet bombing of innocent civilians in Gaza in 2014. Operation Protective Edge. Sounds lovely. Uh, two and a half thousand people, 500 children blown to pieces by the most sophisticated airplanes in the world. It's not a fight, really, is it, that, you know? It's not much of a fight, that. So that's when these guys came up. They started showing up then around um, London at the time, um, having a go at people who were saying very strong things about the Israeli bombardment of Gaza. Now they're taking people like Alison Shablow to court and saying that she's, um, basically, she's a, a bigot and it's all hate speech and all of that. But it isn't. And I think, to be honest, then, you know, I know what sort of society we live in. I know what you're, I know what you're likely to think about the judiciary and the establishment. But I have a feeling Alison Shablow is going to win the day there. I think Alison Shablow is going to win the day. And I think, ultimately, she's going to be found not guilty or it's going to be thrown out of court eventually. I really do believe that. I know um, in court last week, she did say that um, she's not she's not denied the Holocaust, but she said that she questions the 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 numbers given as to the numbers of people who were killed, and she has issues with the capacity to kill so many people in gas chambers. She said this in open court uh, last week. A lot of people have said this over the years. As uh, the journalist Kevin Myers, um, others, I've said before that. Um, listen. The, the Nazis rounded up as many Jews as they possibly could. They put them in concentration camps. Um, they, 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 they denigrated, demeaned, and humiliated Jews using newspapers, using cartoons. When they got them in concentration camps, they tortured and murdered Jews. There's no doubt about that. But it wasn't just the Jews they tortured and murdered. They tortured and murdered a lot of people. Did they kill six million? I don't know. I, I, I've always said, who counted? You know, and, and, and could they have done that? But they did. 
they did set out to um, to kill as many Jews as they could. Of course, in the early 1930s, and of course, Ken Livingston got his career absolutely flushed down the toilet for saying this in the early 1930s. Um, the Nazis had an agreement with Zionists to move as many Jews as they could to Palestine. Something changed then in the intervening years, and they moved away from kicking out the Jews to killing Jews. And I believe that. But as for the numbers, I have no idea. But even though I disagree, as I said, with some of the things that Alison has said in the past, and I have on the programme disagreed with her. We've had a we've had a couple of very interesting adult mature chats. I would absolutely defend to the death, and I mean it sounds very dramatic that her right to say what she believes, even if it's wrong. And who's to say if it's wrong or not, or right or wrong or whatever? Who cares? I said this in an article I wrote last week, interviewing Mark Collett and Anne-Marie Waters and other people on the alt-right. doesn't matter who's wrong and who's right, ultimately. It's not about who's wrong and it's not about who's right. It's about people getting to hear two different sides of it. Two different sides. These people believe Islam is hell-bent on destroying the world. It's an Islamic plan for world domination. And the presenter, me, I don't believe that at all. I believe it's far more simple than that. It's not about getting rid of the Muslims or getting rid of the white Europeans, getting rid of everybody. In the long term, is what I believe. Certain groups will suffer from time to time. Um, certain cultures at any given time might be suffering the impacts of this more but ultimately the agenda is all about getting rid of every, you know, virtually every last one of us, multifaceted through, you know the geoengineering agenda the medical agenda the vaccination uh, agenda, the transhumanist agenda it's all there and it doesn't specifically target blacks Whites, Hispanics, Arabs, it's coming after everybody. But it doesn't matter who's right and who's wrong. All that matters is you hear two sides of the story. And we're not getting it in the mainstream media. And increasingly, we're not getting it in the independent media at all. We're getting echo chamber programs. Let's bring on people who, 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 uh, who agree with the presenter for two hours or an hour or four hours. No, let's, let's speak to the people who disagree with us. They're not all shills. They're not all establishment whores. Many of them came to their conclusions because they get their information from The Guardian, The Telegraph, The Daily Mail, the BBC and Channel 4. Let's not hold it against them. We used to get our information from those same sources. So anyway, Christ, 37 minutes, what's going on? Right, I just wanted to see that this work then, and it does work. Um... And I, I'll try and get some software, as I mentioned earlier, so that in the future, I might be able to get somebody and bring them in on screen as well. Like I said, Trish, the dish, uh, the lovely Trish, she does that. I see, I see her doing it every day. As I'm preparing um, my show, I see, um, I, see, I see Trish doing that. Hi to Paul Kennedy, to Alan Bristow, I do an Alan... Lolly to Ross to Richard Kinsett and the Houseki. Houseki there, yeah. Good stuff. Now, as far as I know, I have no idea. When I end this, it automatically uploads, does it? Or it stays on the page? I have no idea. But I'll leave it there anyway. Just thought we'd have a go and, and see how it goes. Ray McGovern, CIA legend, on the program tomorrow. And Chris. I bought him up, but I am. Um, I can't think of his surname. Um, I was only speaking to him today. Chris was the man mentioned by Annie Carey, Annie Marie Carey last night. He's the guy in Gateshead that's got evidence that thousands and thousands of 5G boosters are being attached to lamp posts in Gateshead. I've looked at his videos. This is not, you know, this guy's the real deal. So I'm going to speak to him in the morning, record him, play it on the live show tomorrow uh, after we hear from uh, Ray McGovern. So there you go. Right. So don't say I'm a lazy bastard. After the show went down, I said, right, well, let's try out this live stream thing. And uh, Dean Smith says, who can be the most offended on behalf of other people they don't even know? There, yeah, well, that's the thing, isn't it? 
that's the thing, yeah. Right, folks. Um, I'm glad that worked. Then it seems to it seems to work pretty straightforwardly. Um, I'll uh, I'm going to have a cold beer now. Is what I'm going to do. A little cold beer, and then I'm going to um, I'm going to get an early night. Excuse me. And uh, make sure there are no issues ahead of tomorrow's program, and then we'll be live as usual tomorrow on Fab Radio Two in Manchester. Triggerwarning.tv. Uh, richieallen.co.uk tune in radio of course but don't forget folks there is a new youtube channel it's on the richie allen facebook page there's a link to it and also every podcast automatically uploads to spotify.com and itunes so if you're a spotify subscriber or even if you just have spotify because you can have a free spotify version you can get the richie allen show on spotify it's very easy we're in um, we're on plenty and pl- we're, we're on plenty of platforms now we really are. It's great. It's been um, it's been an interesting three and a half years so far, and uh, we've done well in three and a half years to get so much of a reach in in that short uh, space of time. Radio, then. Well, look, enjoy uh, the rest of your Wednesday. Uh, Nathan says, uh, in politics, stupidity isn't a handicap. Yeah, that's right. You could apply that to any of them speaking today. Going to stick a bit of Bruce the Boss Springsteen on the old uh, record player. And uh, I'm going to disappear. So um, have a great rest of your Wednesday. Uh, Sorry again about the live radio show today. It's only the third time that's happened in three and a half years that we were bumped off air. That's very, very good odds. I'll take those odds and I'll see you tomorrow. All righty. All right, bye.